Hey everybody, welcome to our very first Happy Adams Twitch stream. Uh, I'm Jesse Shell. I'm Yotam, I'm the project director. I'm Mike Lee, I'm the tech technical director. All right, hey, are we in frame, Mike? Yeah, you guys look great. That's beautiful, I'm so glad to know it. And we have Mike here behind the camera, working the scenes. Hi everybody, hi coach. Turning the Twitch crank, he's making it all happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Happy Atoms is something we've been working on for a long time. I don't know, years and years. Years and years. Years and years and years. You've had it in your brain for at least six, seven years now. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. A, long, a long time. This is uh, something I've been fiddling around with, and then it's something we've kind of brought to light. Uh, presently, we're doing our uh, an Indiegogo. We've got, what, five days, four days to go? We yeah, are, uh, August 2nd, we wrap up. Yeah, August 2nd, we, and, we've, and we've got a ways to go. So hopefully people, uh, maybe this will prompt some people to be confident to check out Happy Atoms. Yep. Go to happyatoms.com. You can, that should take you directly to the Indiegogo page and you can see all sorts of stuff and learn about it. All right, who's gonna tell the Happy Atoms story, what this thing is? All right, I can go. All right. So Happy Atoms is a way to really get into chemistry. So for a lot of us, this is something that often deals with a lot of math when you're in class trying to figure out what, a, what are all these shapes and numbers and why does it matter and why should I care? And this is a way to take all of that and say, hey, you don't need to know anything specific about chemistry before you get going. You don't need any expertise before you start. You can literally just snap these together, start, start building them like building blocks that they are. And once you have something, we have a very special way of, of telling what it is that you have. But before we get into that, so, so can you talk a little bit about these models here? Absolutely. So each of, these, uh, each of these models, let me just focus here on the oxygen. They have, I don't know if the camera will be able to see, they have a letter on them which designate which atom it is. They have a, a color on the shell, and this represents the nucleus, with each of these arms representing electrons. I'm happy just to hold things up from the camera if it helps. Sure. Okay, here, yeah, you want to hold an oxygen atom up nice and close, Mike? Sure, yeah. Wait, which camera is it, Mike? It's, it's this camera. That's that I one. knew it. You. There you go. Yeah, so there's the, the colored shell, the different arms, and then when you combine them together, they form a single bond. Mike is blocking. Oh, Mike is right. Yeah, it's true. All right, so, yeah, right. so, and, uh, and the whole idea is, you know, we've, we've designed this to work it can work at college level, it can work at high school level, but it can even work for kids as young as uh, 9 or 10 years old. And what we, we tell people is cover up these little magnets because these all, these snap together magnetically. Everything's all rubber and magnets over here. And if you cover up all the little bonding sites, even if you don't understand anything about chemistry, if you cover up all the magnets on the surface of the atom, you've made a valid molecule. This is just the way nature works. It's a, a thing called the octet rule. And if you snap them together, you've made a valid molecule. The problem is, what is it? So here we've got something, I don't know, you've got two, an N, an O, and two H's, three H's on here. And it's cool, and it's a kind of fun structure to play with, but you have no idea what it is. And this is why we made this app. So Mike's been working away uh, on the, uh, the, the scanner for this app. So maybe can we show how this works? Yeah. So for example, I switch to the app. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. So, in an app, we have a camera, and all you need to do is click the camera button. And so here, this is. let's just be clear what we've got here. You've got, a, we've got an N and three H's is what you snap together. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess with this view, you can sort of see like the magnets, they just bond, they snap together. Once you build something, all you need to do is go take a picture. There you go. Yeah. And so now it identifies using whatever picture you've taken, and all you need to do is click synthesize. And it'll and it'll build a molecule right there for you. All right. So so we can see, you know, you can see the kind of molecular structure and kind of check it out at different angles. And this is where we really start bringing you into the world of chemistry. So once you've built something, you snap it together, take a picture, you can discover it. And once you discover it, you'll int be introduced to a whole world of molecules. And each of these molecules are things that exist in the real world. The whole world is molecules. So what did you make here, Mike? It looks like we made ammonia, NH3. And it looks like ammonia is a fertilizer that helps plants grow and has the highest nitrogen content among all fertilizers. 
All right, can we get more information? Yeah, let's just tap examine. And we have our first introduction of Harper. So let's talk about Harper. So who, who is this guy? So along your journey, as you do all of this, there are two people that help you. Harper is one of them. And these are your research colleagues. They uh, fly around on, on a ship with you as you're exploring the world. They give contacts, they give encouragement, they give quests in, in the form of tasks for you to do. And they're always there to help explain whatever you run into. Yep. And Harper here is actually just telling us what we're about to see, which is uh -huh. the molecular analysis card. And so, in here you <laughs> can view the molecule, you can twirl it around, you can zoom in for a closer look. I didn't even know you could zoom in. Oh yeah. Pinch and zoom. It's I all... Did, I totally didn't know that was possible. <laughs> but beyond that, it's like, oh, where are the hydrogen? All you need to do is tap hydrogen, and it'll highlight them, or tap the nitrogen. You can see what what its bond, notable bond is. Mm -hmm. And here, Harper is telling us about that. You can uh, mm -hmm. highlight the geometry. Cool. Oh, and here's Andy. Yeah. Andy is the other scientist who's along the journey with you. So here you can tell, like, <gasps> oh yeah, ammonia is sort of, it's not, it's an interesting form of pyramidal, trigonal pyramidal. There's not actually too many of this. But, yeah, right. Yep. And you can even tell, like, ammonia is flammable. <gasps> uh, and mm. even what its natural uh, state of matter is. There's uh -huh. with our final little discussion. And so of course state of matter can change hey. as you change temperature and pressure. And so we always just assume standard ambient mm. temperature and pressure, what you normally feel here at normal conditions. Yeah, around 75 degrees. I think it's technically 25 degrees Celsius, but... Cool. And then... More importantly, it's like, okay, we know what a molecule, so now we know some of the chemistry properties of this molecule, but what what is its real world application? And there, all you need to do is tap the photo at the top right corner, and you yeah. get a series of application facts about yeah. this molecule. Sorry, I'm gonna ah. tap right through. It's Andy's favorite feature. Yep. Mm. So here you get, and this is for all the molecules on the map. You have like uh, ammonia, you can learn like where the ammonia use is in this category of life, but also how it could be useful in household applications. And one thing that we've, we've found, even when, when kids start playing with this, they start realizing that, oh, these are things that exist in my house, or I didn't realize that my fridge uses molecules to cool things, or those bottles under the kitchen sink, those are special molecules to do a special job. And the final little hidden feature that's really for people who are starting to get excited and really deep into chemistry, so you can tap the name. So here, ammonia. And huh? every, so a lot of molecules, they have a common name, but they have a more, uh, I guess you're, you're the chemist, Yotam, you can explain this. A yeah, bit. every molecule also has a systematic name. And this is a, a name that's almost like a blueprint that's exactly what that molecule is. Because chemists ran into a problem if I make a molecule, I have, might have a hard time communicating what that molecule is to Jesse. We might have different words for describing the same molecule. And so by creating a system that, if I follow the steps, I will always make the same exact molecule from that name. Yep. So Coach has a lot of uh, detailed questions here about <laughs> how deep can our relationship <laughs> get with our research colleagues. And actually, while no, you can't romance them, and, uh, and disagree on the fundamental applications of chemistry, but it is they are a little more than just tutorial friends. Uh, the, we'll, we'll get to it a little bit later, but one of the really interesting things is each of them has their own research agenda, and, you're, and they send you on various quests, and you can choose which order to pursue the quests in, and uh, that really, uh, you know, th that, that ends up giving uh, a lot of motivation. One of the things that we've been really pleased with in playtesting this, because we've been playtesting this for a couple of years now, is the uh, the quest structure in particular really gets kids gets them to stick with the game. It's not uncommon for us to put this in front of people and they spend 
you know, multiple hours just kind of going through and making different molecules, um, building out the islands, and we'll, we'll talk more about how the islands are structured, and then helping Harper and Andy kind of fulfill their research agendas. Um, it's, it's been very exciting to, to see that. Yeah, we found that there's two main ways that people like to play Happy Atoms. Either you like to start with the model and just build things up, or you tend to go through all the quests and really try to follow along with Harper and Andy. Right. I'd almost say there's a third way in, in that some people are trying to fill out the map, and that's yeah. their focus. Yeah. Some people are trying to finish the, the research agenda, and that's their focus. And then other people are really into um, following the directions. I almost oh, yeah. see that as a little almost of a different, because, mm -hmm. because one of the things, we, we tried to make this as free, as, 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 as different, uh, as free for you to pursue in the way you care about uh, as possible. So myself, when I like to play, I really like to have to figure it out. So if you go, can you pop back to the map there? Oh yeah. So one of the things that's really cool is now that you found ammonia, you'll see these other areas pop up. So now you get these hints like a molecule exists called NO2 and another one called N2O. And for me, that's like, that's a cool puzzle. How am I gonna build that? What is that gonna be like? And I like to kind of chase it down and figure it out. Other people find that a headache. And so if you want to, you can go click on the hint button. So here I'm clicking on NO2. And it gives you Lego style instructions to take it step by step in order to figure out uh, how to build it together, right? So I'll connect these two pairs of electrons and I'm doing that right here. All right, so I, collect, I connected nitrogen and oxygen. Now what do I do? And now I get another oxygen in here to form a, oh, a double bond. Yep. The first one was a single bond, now I'm doing a double bond, right? Yes. And uh, and some people really prefer to play that way. And so that, that's one thing I, I'm, I'm really proud of about this, the fact that we've afforded so many different ways to, uh, to play the game. There we go. Yeah. We got those guys all snapped together. Yeah, and then once you built it, all, again, all you need to do is tap on the camera button. And go. Take a picture. Good. Yeah, and then you discover a new molecule. Right, so now, so now this is just in, in you know, uh, I know a little chemistry, but not a lot. So NO2, I'm like, okay, so that's nitrogen dioxide. But this isn't nitrous oxide, is it? I don't know. This is, I don't know what this is. So, what was it, a fraternal molecule? Oh, that's actually... Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. I got a little, uh, mm -hmm. a little... So uh, I went for NO2, mm -hmm. but we ended up detecting... It recognized it a little differently, but this is one of the interesting things with chemistry. It's like, even within the same arrangement of molecules, you can have a lot of different... Oh, I, ways that it gets I, arranged. I see. So, it, so what happened was it detected it as an ion, and it's all as a single yeah. bond. Yeah, as, but, as a single bond. And what? I, so what I should have done is click not what you built. Yep. Right. And then here you can right. find. I think it's the third one. Right. That one's the right one. Or is it this? No, it's the third one. Okay. And so what we're seeing here, this is a, a screen of isomers. And so uh, when you have a molecule that has different kinds of atoms in it, they can be arranged in different ways. They could have charges, they could have extra bonds, but the composition is always the same. And so this is a screen that lets you really drill down. Wait, what's the first one? I just want to make sure I understand this. Nitrite. So that looks like it's a nitrite so ion. That's a nitrite ion. So that's probably NO2 minus. Yep. Yes. And so that's yeah, what it was reading. And so presently, it sounds like we have that prioritized, and we okay. shouldn't, yeah. right? And this is why it's beta software, is, uh, is exactly <laughs> exactly what that is. One of the things that, that's blown us away is we, we, in order to get all this information about chemicals, we ended up going through professional chemical databases, and we were, we were shocked to realize that there were uh, uh, inconsistencies and inaccuracies in these professional chemical databases and that's thrown us for a loop for a little bit of a loop and so we're working with some professors to make sure all of our data is correct before the software is, is launched and it, it it's really a, an amazing it's an interesting experience when you go and you show it to different chemistry professionals and each one sort of takes their own view of chemistry because yeah. you know chemistry is everything and all you can do is focus on a slice of that and every time we showed it to a different professional or an academic, they would come in and it's like, oh, have you thought about this part of chemistry? Or have you looked, made sure that you're correct in this aspect? And that's always been a really intriguing 
learning experience for us. All right, all right. Anyway, so let's. Where's our Where's our thing? Which so one it's the third, one the third one. Yeah, and it really just highlights all of the chemical databases and all the work that we have. Here we, there we go. go. There we Here we go. go. Nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. Ooh, a major pollutant it comes from internal combustion engines. Really? Yeah. Does That's it have any other purpose, or is it just a pollutant? Oh. Let's find out. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot about CO2, but NO2 we don't hear very much about. It. Yep. Very toxic to humans. Hmm. Oh boy. Right. Yeah, and for this one, this does seem like the only application fact. So this is probably one of the. This is interesting. I didn't know this either about nitrogen dioxide. See, we're all learning right yeah. here. Yeah. Because there is an awful lot. I mean, not all of us have been able to go through all the content in the game, and so it's one of the things that's exciting about it. So presently, we have uh, how many uh, detailed facts about how many different molecules? 150 with three noble gases. Right. So there's 153 total hexes on the map. Yep. Cool. And but how many molecules can we detect total? Oh, thousands. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah, it seems like it's north of 10,000. Yep. Yeah. And and the way that'll work, you saw we, we ended up putting I think that nitric ion in the uh, in the cave there, um, and so you get bonuses for finding these frontier molecules, the ones that are we don't feature, but if you discover them, they end up unlocking achievements for you in the yep. game. Because they're all real molecules. They're all things yep. that actually exist, and we want to make sure. You're not just building nothing. You are building something, and it's just the world of chemistry is so vast. It's, we can't categorize everything. But yeah, and then sort of one thing Jesse was mentioned, but we have this entire world of chemistry. So we can go through the different continents and everything. So we're on nitrogen, but we also have phosphorus, phosphorus uh, oxygen, hydrogen, Silicon. And each one of these continents is grouped by the major element in its composition. Yep. So if it only has hydrogen, it goes onto the hydrogen continent. If you add carbon to it, now it goes on the carbon continent. Yep. Carbon are halogen grounds, which is uh, both fluorine and chlorine. Sulfur, and yeah, we have, and then also the noble gases, but they're a little bit of a fun hidden secret. Yeah, and so we, we focus on the first three rows of the periodic table with this. So uh, how many atoms will we have in a set when someone buys a set? We will have 50 total atoms when you buy a full set of happy atoms. And, and so how many elements is that? That is 16 total elements. Okay, so 16 elements but 50 actual atoms because there's duplicates so that you can make interesting mm -hmm. atoms. So we have uh, as many as six carbon atoms. For, I think six, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, right, so that you can build things like a benzene ring and... Uh, you guys will probably get to that uh, a little later. Yeah, we can definitely dive into that. And if, if you have any questions about what's in the set or the different set options, you can check out our Indiegogo page, which has all of the details. It has a video that goes through all of this yep. and uh, lots of images that show what, what's in each set. Can you drop a link, Mike? Because this would be a good time to drop a link. And while we're talking about dropping links, uh, anybody who's new here, if you want to consider giving us a, a follow, we would certainly welcome uh, uh, a follow. Uh, Shell Games is always has a lot of different things to show. We do a lot of different uh, projects here. We're showing some of our projects and also just games that people are really excited about and and interested in. Cool. So there's the link. You can uh, you'll you'll see right there the happyatoms.com link. If you want to check that out, you'll see a video about Happy Atoms and of course how you can help back the campaign. One thing to note: if you know teachers uh, who might be interested in this, that we have some special. Uh, uh, tiers available just for teachers and educators right now. But really this is very much designed like a chemistry set to be something that anybody could enjoy at home um, but of course schools are, uh, have, are welcome to enjoy it as well. <laughs> yeah and while we were talking about atoms we can pull up the periodic table. Oh yeah. And so this is a, uh, a deeper dive into each of the different elements that we have in the game. Uh -huh. And as you tap on, on the different elements, it gives you a little bit more information, uh, specifically about the valence electrons, because those are the electrons that participate in chemical bonding. And for some of our more uh, astute chemists out there, you might notice we are missing two elements. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are, though. Um, uh, we, we, this is a really hard decision for us to make. Uh, we there are certain challenges. So the two that are conspicuously absent here are boron and aluminum, which 
bond in, let's call it, very creative ways uh, that were going to go a bit outside what we could simulate with rubber and magnets. So instead of coming up with cheesy ways to try and apologize for them, we just dropped them out of there. And to our surprise, no one seems to care. So uh, uh, anyway, if you're a huge fan of boron aluminum, I apologize. But, the, the, but not doing that allowed us to be able to clearly model uh, the, all the things on the right side, as well as you, the ones on the left side, which tend to bond ionically. And that's, I think, a thing worth talking about. Um, in fact, I'm going to go and hold these up a little close. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, we, yeah. we could just go to camera here. I really oh, yeah, just oh go, yeah. yeah, you could go to camera there. Sure. Better. We don't need to do that. So if you'll see, so if we, if we compare, for example, hydrogen and lithium, yeah. um, they look fairly similar in their structure and their number of valence electrons. But one of the things we chose to do is give a clear plastic tube uh, for lithium, whereas we have a, some, an opaque one for hydrogen. And this is sort of meant to indicate that lithium and uh, some of its other friends, magnesium, some of these guys, they tend to bond uh, ionically in a way that isn't really considered a direct bond. And so this just helps uh, make that clear. So let's see if we talk about something very, very familiar to most people. So sodium chloride comes up. Oh, we don't have chlorine around. Do we? Oh, that's our buddy, chlorine right there. Here's our buddy chlorine right here. Chlorine only has one bonding site. Yep. Um, so if I wanted to do a covalent bond, I could put a hydrogen right right there, and that would be a covalent bond. Yep, both it, electrons are being shared with each other. And I'll give a spoiler, that makes hydrochloric acid. But if you swap that out for a sodium instead, which doesn't have, there are no bonding sites on, on the sodium, uh, it's just kind of floating out there, uh, you get kind of a, a this is the, the crystalline structure for table salt. Mm -hmm. More spoilers, so take a picture and let's just see if I half agrees with my analysis. All right, there you go. And then we'll synthesize it. And you can see here this is represented differently, not with a connected line, uh, but instead because it's an ionic bond, not a covalent bond, they're, they're just sort of adjacent to each other. Boom. Down here. Oh, it's and so fluorine. Ooh, actually, that's a... Ooh, we got a little bug. Yeah, that's on the axle. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. That's cool. I'll just swap it out and act like it never happened there. Boom. It's like we built fluorine like, the whole time. sodium fluoride. That's cool. But this is why it's beta software. That's why it's not ready to, to ship yet. Present plans to ship this? When are we expecting these to be out? Yeah, we expect these to be out in stores in November. Yeah, November. And, of course, and uh, if you're... Oh, look. Thank you. Thank you for the salt. Thanks, Mike. Kim. That's a little... <laughs> Much, much appreciated. Yes, toothpaste, toothpaste salt. salt. But, but this is one of the things that we find comes up a lot is uh, you get these unexpected relationships. I, 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 it's something I hadn't really thought about, like how similar the structure of table salt and the structure of sodium fluoride, which is the, kind of the active ingredient in toothpaste, really are. They're really incredibly similar. And that's the thing we tend to start to notice when we play, uh, when we play with these things. Yeah, and it points at, at a deeper discussion with how molecules interact with each other and how just swapping out one single element in a compound makes two very different kinds of chemicals that have very different functions. Cool. Well, I'm going to scamper away and then let you guys get into the deeper aspects of this. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Of, of Happy Atoms. But I, I am super excited about this. I mean, we've been working on this for, for quite some time. Uh, we've had great support from the Department of Education. Our big partner on this is Thames and Cosmos, the company that invented the chemistry set, and they're, they're helping us with a lot of the manufacturing details and the distribution. Uh, so this has just been really, really exciting watching this uh, come together. So anyway, uh, I, I definitely want to, I'll give another plug for the Indiegogo. If you're interested in getting your hands on this, that's going to be the fastest way to do it because people who uh, sign up for the Indiegogo will be get the first ones uh, to be able to get this before it appears in, in stores. And at a discount. Yep, that's true. So you'll get a better price and you'll get a first. Um, so, all right. All right. Good luck, so much, you guys. Yeah, thanks See for joining later. us, Jesse.